4.5 Use of differentiation to find stationary points of a curve, i.e. maxima, minima and points of inflection. OK, some key points we've got to be aware of. Um, this is expected that in questions which ask for maximum minimum inflections, candidates will prove the nature of the point they have found. Now, uh, the general idea there is, uh, the most the simplest idea is to use a second derivative. Although it says down here, knowledge of the second derivative is not expected, but may be used, you can use that to prove what, what they are. There is another way of doing it. If you think about what the gradient is before and after the stationary point, you can then say whether it's one of these three things. Um, the, the, the term turning points um, uh, is not going to be used because turning points are, are subtly different from stationary points. Turning points are maximums and minimums because they turn around. Uh, a maximum is when it goes up and then comes down. Minimums when it goes down and then comes up. Inflections are when it just it just goes through zero and then comes back, keeps on going. So that's not a turning point. Inflections are not turning points, uh, but they are. Um, stationary points because the gradient is zero at that point. So that's a, a subtle difference, but um, it's, it specifically says that we're we'll not be using turning points, we're using stationary points. Um, you know, no applications of maximum, minimum, real life situations. That's that's quite advanced, but uh, and it's not going to be going to be examined. Um, questions may require candidates to work out the value of x, for which the function is increasing or decreasing. So increase and decrease. And I've seen quite a few questions on those, so that's quite an important thing to know how to do. And it's fairly straightforward. You just got to, for increasing functions, you just got to uh, show where uh, the differential is positive. If it's always positive, then it's an increasing function. If it's always negative, it's a decreasing function. And sometimes part of the function is increasing or part of the function is decreasing. So you have to say between what points it is increasing or indeed decreasing. Okay, let's have a look at some questions. Um, don't forget you can go back to the index for calculus by pressing this button and, and other questions that I've done on exam papers will appear as links in the practice questions bar. Okay, so there's four questions here for you to have a go at um, to test your understanding and knowledge of this topic. Um, I'll go through them in a few seconds. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, let's go into question one. Prove that the curve y equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x minus 2 has only one stationary point. So it's only got one value where dy by dx equals 0. So a stationary point is where the differential equals 0. That's what we're looking for. So we've got to differentiate this curve. So dy by dx equals um, 3x squared. So we, 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 we differentiate x cubed. We get 3 down the front. Take 1 off the power. Um, 3x squared, take uh, take the 2 down to the front to make 6, we times by it, and the power gets reduced by 1 to x, and 3x just becomes 3. So that's our um, different, that's our differential uh, gradient function. So we're going to make that equal to 0, and then solve it to show that it only has um, one stationary point. And then we're going to show it's an inflection. So that's equal to zero is when we have stationary point. Um, I'm going to divide throughout by three to get rid of some of this stuff. You don't have to. You could solve that with that, but it's much easier to. If you can spot a common factor in a, in a quadratic, you can just divide throughout by that. Um, so that's that. Uh, can we factorise that? Yeah. We get x plus one, and x plus one tells us that x equals minus one only. So there's only one point of inflection because these are these are uh, repeated roots. So x minus one is the only point at which solves this equation, makes this zero, and therefore the only stationary point. Um, and then we've got to show that the stationary point is a point of inflection. So if it's a point of inflection, um, two ways of doing that. There's the quick and easy way is just to differentiate this function again to get the second differential. If you can differentiate it once, you can differentiate it twice, and that's written as d2y by dx squared. Uh, don't ask me why, it just is. Um, and we just differentiate again, so we differentiate this, this 2 times 3 is 6, and then take 1 off the power, differentiate this is 6. So that's the second differential, so uh, d2y by dx squared equals 6x plus 6, so that equals minus 6 plus 6 which is 0 therefore an inflection 
Okay, so just saying that diff second differential is zero proves it's an inflection. So when the second differential is um, negative, if d2y by dx squared is less than zero, that's a maximum. Okay, now quite often in maths um, you get these sort of reverse ideas. Um, I think maximum is going to be a big number, but when the diff second differential is less than zero, that's a maximum. And when a second differential is greater than zero, that's a minimum. So for me, I always think about it being the opposite way I would have thought it should be. Um, maybe that's a good idea, maybe it's not, but um, that's the way I do it. Another way of doing it is to think about um, the gradients before and after the point. So um, if, we, if we're thinking about a curve of some, some description, so we know it's a point of inflection, let's, let's actually draw that. Okay, so some sort of a point of inflection where the gradients become zero and then gone, gone um, come in and then gone out. On an inflection, the gradient on the way in is going to be the same on the way out. So this is at x equals minus 1. So if we check it at minus 2 and then check it at 0, assuming it's not gone through another turning point before or after then, um, if it's the same grade, it's the same, if they're both either positive or negative, then that's a point of inflection because it's not changed. Um, so this is the, the gradient function. When it's minus 2, or when it's when it's 0, um, in fact, let's use this one because it's a neater function. As you know, let's use the original one. So when it's 0, we get 0, 0, and 3. So when it's 0, the, the gradient is going to be 3 at that point. So that's a positive gradient. And when it's uh, minus 2, we get minus 2 squared is 4, times by 3 is 12, plus um, 6 times minus 2 is minus 12. So that cancels out to leave us with 3 there. So the gradient is also 3 on this side. So it's going a positive and then positive again, so that is an inflection. If it was negative, negative, that would also be inflection. Um, if it was a maximum, then it would come in positive and come out negative. And when it's a minimum, it goes in negative and comes out positive. So depending on how you've been taught this, I mean, the second differential is the easiest way. Just to differentiate the function again, it doesn't require any greater skill. And just put the number in, tells you what it is. You've got to remember which one's which. Or you can actually analyze the gradients going in and coming out to say what sort of turning point, uh, sorry, what sort of um, stationary point it is. Okay, question two. Show that the curve y equals 4x minus x to the 4 has only one stationary point. Determine the nature of this point. So we need to differentiate to find where the stationary point is. So dy by dx equals 4 minus 4x cubed. And we're going to make that equal to 0. So uh, take that over to there, so we get 4x cubed equals 4. Divide by the 4, we get x cubed equals 1. So that tells us x must be equal to 1. There's only one solution to that. Therefore, only one stationary point. Stationary point. Um, what sort of point is that? Well, if we do d2y by dx squared, um, we differentiate it again, the 4 disappears, and then we get minus 12x squared, because 3 times 4 is 12, take one off the power to get 2. So that's our second differential. Um, when x is 1, d2y by dx squared is going to be minus 12. Therefore, because it's less than 0, a maximum. Okay, so look at question three. Um, this is all about increase, question three or four about increasing and decreasing functions. So increasing function, if it's an increasing function for all values of x, that means the gradient is always positive. If it's a decreasing function of all values of x, the gradient is always negative. So we differentiate it, so dy by dx. Um, differentiate that, three times a third is one, so we just got x squared, we take one off the power. Two times three is six. Uh, plus 10, so that's our differential. Um, so to prove this is always an increasing function, so there's a couple of ways of doing it. What we're, what we're looking for, if we could graph this function, what we want to show is that it's always above zero. If it's always above zero, if the gradient is always above zero, then it's always increasing. So this function is a quadratic, it should look like a U shape. Um, if we can find the bottom of this graph, then we can show. Um, it's always above zero. There's, there's another way of doing it. We can we can think about the um, the formula, um, something called the discriminant, which is on the on the 
quadratic form if we have the minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This bit here is called, called the discriminant. Um, if there is no value for that, if this square root is undefined, then there are no solutions because what we're doing with the formula is trying to find where it crosses the x-axis. So if it never crosses the x-axis, then the formula has no answers. And the only way it can have no answers is if this square root doesn't exist. So that means that um, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 implies um, no solutions. So therefore increasing because it has no negative values. Um, so you can do that. That's one way of doing it. So uh, the b, squ b squared, um, this is your b term minus 6. This is your a, which is 1. And this is your c. So using the standard formula for quadratic equations, you get b squared, which is um, minus 6 squared minus 4 lots of 1, which is a, times c, which is 10. And that equals... Uh, 36, I should put a bracket around the minus 6, 36 minus 40, which is minus 4, therefore no solution. Okay, and therefore increasing. Or, um, probably a bit more sophisticated, is actually find the value of this bottom point, which is, is more conclusive, I feel. Um, so if we completed the square on that function, that uh, quadratic, um, by halving the b, minus 3 or squared um, and then figuring out what number must go here to make this plus 10 when we multiply it out. Um, the way I do that is um, I just square this um, value here and take it away. So minus 3 squared is 9, take that away and then add on the 10 because when I multiply the bracket I'm going to get plus 9 so if I take the 9 on the outside that cancels that bit out. And then we just simplify that a bit more, so we get uh, plus 1. Uh, therefore, minimum equals, in fact, I think I'm going to, no, the minimum equals, um, the minimum value equals 3, 1. Therefore, um, increasing because the minimum value is a positive number um, it's at the 0 0.31 therefore all, all the values are above zero okay so question four uh, we've got to try and find uh, what values this is a decreasing function so that means it's not always decreasing so part of the part of the curve is decreasing part of it isn't so we've got to find that so to do that we need to differentiate it dy by dx is equal to 3x squared so down the front, take one off the power, 2 times 3 is 6, take one off the power, the 5 goes to 0. Okay, we want that to be decreasing, so we've got to make we've got to find out when that's less than 0. So we've got to solve this um, quadratic inequality. To do that, we just solve it like it's an equation, find the two points. So what we're looking for here is um, two points where it crosses the line, and everything underneath here between these two points. Different color. Everything between these two points here is where it's a decreasing function because that's where the gradient's negative. So we've got to figure out those two points. Um, so we could divide through by three to get x squared minus x is less than two uh, x is less than zero. Factorize out an x. So we've got x x minus two is less than zero. So those are our two points. X. When does that make this zero? Well, that's when x equals zero. And when x, so that, but that's why I, I actually knew this answer. That's why x is going through zero. And uh, the other value is when this is zero, so when x equals two. So that's two there. So we want it between those two values. So we want all the values where x is greater than zero, but less than two. We don't want it equal to zero because that's the zero value. To be a decreasing function, it must be negative. So we don't want to make it equal to. Okay, so that's all the values where of x where that's a decreasing function.